Hello students, today we are going to discuss about your unit number one that is introduction to microbial diversity in microbiology paper. Uh, microbial diversity is the type of microorganism found on earth. There are different types of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae and viruses. Uh, generally, this unit is dealing with the evolution of microorganisms, then um, taxonomy, applications of taxonomy, types of classification, and uh, types of microorganisms, and their place in the classification system. But to study any classification, we should know a basic unit of classification, that is taxonomic rank, and on that taxonomic rank, an organism are given name. So taxonomic rank are one of the important uh, parameter, one of the important topic one should know before studying taxonomy. So what are taxonomic rank? It is important in preparing a classification system and studying classification of microorganism. A category in any rank unites group in the level below it based on the shared property and this level are called taxonomic rank means if you group microorganism on basis of their genotypic and phenotypic similarity right that is the basic group which is again placed in the hierarchy of taxonomy and each level is called taxonomic rank in prokaryotic taxonomy, the most commonly used level or rank are species, genera, families, order, classes, and phyla. These are the names which are arranged in ascending order, means the ground level is species, and when you go above the taxonomy, right, the highest level is phyla. So here you can see the taxonomic rank. Uh, if you see in a ascending order, domain is bacteria, as there are three domain, right? That is bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. So this is the domain bacteria. Phylum is proteobacteria. There are many proteobacteria depending on their reactivity. They are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. They, they are called class, then order, below order there is a family, in family there are many genus and in genus you will find different species. So this is the hierarchy which you will observe in the classification of bacteria and each level is called taxonomic rank. One can place microorganism within the homogeneous group that itself is a member of a large non-overlapping hierarchical arrangement and each group is called taxonomic rank. If you can see in the next table, the microbial group at each level or rank have names with ending or suffix which shows their characteristic of each level. So the name itself will give you highlight which kind of microorganism is that. Microbiologists generally use informal name in place of the formal hierarchical name for describing microorganism because they are very much uh, easy to understand their physiology and their uh, properties with the general name rather than the uh, hierarchical name. The typical example of such uh, informal name are purple bacteria, pyropics, methane oxidizing bacteria, sulfate reducing bacteria, lactic acid bacteria. So these names itself highlight the feature or key component of the microorganism which are present in a particular group and will help the scientists to decide that in which category they are dealing with. Here you can see the example of the taxonomic rank with the help of a uh, species that is called Shigella dysentery. This is the organism which is uh, classified in the genus of Shigella. The family is Enterobacteriaceae, order is Enterobacteria. The class is Proteobacter, Gamma Proteobacter. 
phylum is Proteobacteraceae and the domain is bacteria. The basic taxonomic group in microbial taxonomy is species. The taxonomist working with higher microorganism define species differently than do the microbiologist because higher organism carry out sexual reproduction while microbes don't go for sexual reproduction. They are mostly asexually reproduced. So the species definition for higher organism that says that the group of interbreeding or potentially interbreeding natural population that are reproductively isolated from other groups means the member of the same species can reproduce within but they fail to reproduce with the other uh, organism of the different group that is the actual definition of species for higher animal this is satisfactory definition for organism that are capable of sexual reproduction but fails to describe the species of many microorganisms because they do not reproduce sexually so how do you define prokaryotic species? They are generally characterized on basis of their phenotypic and genotypic differences. Means those organisms which share their phenotypic and genotypic character, they are placed in the same group. And those who are different from each other in phenotypic and genotypic respect, they are placed in the other species. So in case of bacteria, or you can say in case of prokaryotic organism, even in archaea also, the species is more defined on basis of their phenotype and genotype rather than on basis of their reproduction capacity. A prokaryotic species is a collection of a strain that is the state that is having the stable property and it is having the dif difference in the their phenotypic and genotypic property significantly from the other stream. This definition is very much subjective and can be interpreted in many different ways and there are so many debates about the uh, definition of prokaryotic species but this is widely accepted so we study this definition. Uh, the following more precise definition is has been proposed by some bacterial taxonomists and they said that the species on basis of their genotypic uh, similarity that is why it is called genome species and it is a collection of strains that have similar g plus c composition and 70 percent or greater similarity on basis of their dna hybridization experiment means when you carry out DNA hybridization uh, test, they should share more than 70% similarity in their uh, genome or in their DNA, then they are supposed to be placed in a similar species. Ideally, a species also should be phenotypically distinguishable from the other similar species, means there should be clear margin between the phenotypic character of the two species, they should not be overlapped. The strain is the rather basic unit which will define the species of an, or of an organism. The strain is a population of organism that is distinguishable from at least some other population within a particular taxonomic category. Means a strain of the organism should have certain features or should have certain phenotypic character which can be distinguishable or separated from the other strain of the different species. It is considered to have descended from a single organism or pure culture isolate. Which organism are considered of a single strain? Right? So they are the member or they are the descendant of a single microbial cell they multiply and produce large number of cells and those cells are called a single strain organism means they are the component of a single strain. This is considered to have descended from a single microorganism or pure culture isolate. Pure culture is the culture of an organism 
coming from the multiplication of a single isolate and that is why it is called pure culture. The strain within the species may differ slightly from one another in many ways. So you can't say that they are, there is no difference in among the organism of the same species. There is a slight difference can be observed in the member of a same species depending on their morphology, biochemistry, serology, right? But that difference lies within 10 to 20 percent ranges uh, as the DNA is similar more than 70 percent. So you won't find much change or much difference in the member of a same species but those strains are different from each other depending upon their differences the strain are categorized as biovar morphovar and serovars uh, the biovar are the variant of prokaryotic strain which are having the difference of changing their biochemical and physiological differences means they have slight change in the temperature tolerance ph preferences or they show some difference in their biochemical characters. Morphovar are those strains which differ in their morphological characters. And serovar are those strains which, which differ in their antigenic property, means they have certain uh, proteins or certain markers which are different from the other organism or other member of the strain of the same species. One strain of a species is designated as a type strain. Type strain means it is the mother strain or the first strain which is isolated, studied thoroughly and which is used to name the species. That is called type strain. Right? Type strain is the main strain from where the other strains are named and identified. It is usually one of the first strain and studied thoroughly more fully characterized than the other string. However, it does not have to be most representative member. It is not, it, no, it should not be the most abundant one, but it should be the first one which is used to name the species and from where the other strings are typed and identified. So that strain is called the type string. The type string for the species is called the mainstream which is used to the uh, used for the nomenclature or for the naming of the species only those strains which are very similar to the type strain or type species are included in the species so which strains are considered under the species will be decided by the character which are similar to the type strain those strains which share the similarity with the type strain can be accommodated in the species. If they are not similar with the type strain, they will not be accommodated in the species. Each species is assigned to a genus. Above each species, there will be a genus. And it is the next strength in the taxonomic hierarchy. A genus is a well-defined group of one or more species that is closely, se clearly separate from one another and they may be quite closely related to each other also. So those species who are having much more similarity among their character are placed together under single genus and those which don't share those character will be placed in another genus. This two Taxonomic rank are very much important in the case of naming of a microorganism and the procedure or the branch is called nomenclature. So how do you name a microbe? The nomenclature is a branch of taxonomy concerned with the naming of a taxonomic group in agreement with publisher group. There are published rules you should follow when you name any taxonomic rank as well as microorganism. Just like other living organisms, microbiologists also name microbe according to the binomial system. By means two, binomial system means there are two different uh, group or different words which will name a microorganism. There are two different components which are used to name the microorganism. It was given by Carl Linus, a Swedish botanist, and popularly accepted. The names are generally Latinized. Uh, written in a italic uh, word format, italic script, and the name consists two parts. 
the first part which start with capital letter it, it is a generic name and the second part which is which start with uncapitalized uh, letter it is a specific uh, specific epithet meant it is, it is a species name uh, here you can see the example very much popular uh, microorganism that is Escherichia coli well Escherichia e, it is start with e and it is a genus name and coli it start with small c and it is a species name the specific epithet is stable there is no chance that the name of species or you can say the second half is liable to change it is fixed the oldest epithet for the particular organism takes precedence and must be used right so the first time when the microbe is named the species name should be used for every time though if you change its taxonomic place depending upon the further study or references but the species name never changes though genus name can be changed depending upon the reshuffling or reorganization in the classification or taxonomy with the help of new information available from research for example here you can see the genus streptococcus has one now it is divided in two genera that is enterococcus and lectococcus based on 16s rrna analysis and other characteristics because it was a large uh, genus and organism are having vast differences so scientists have decided to bifurcate the genus and uh, give the two different genera that is enterococcus and lectococcus the organism that was earlier known as streptococcus fecalis where streptococcus is a genus name and fecalis is a, a species name and it has given a new name depending upon the genus which has been bifurcated and now it is known enterococcus fecalis here you can see the fecalis remains the constant but the genus name changed often the name will be shortened to express the microorganism this abbreviating uh, method has got a first letter of the genus with the capital and followed by a full stop or dot and then the full name of the species is written the list of approved short name of each microorganism were published in 1980 in a very popular book that is international journal of systematic bacteriology and uh, day by day the newly valid names are published periodically so this is all about the taxonomic rank the prokaryotic species the role of species and genus name in the binomial nomenclature the role of type strain for naming different strain and the biovar morphovar and serovar they are the differences in the strain present into the same species so it is one of the important topic to study before we start with the classification thank you